Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, keep liking, keep sharing, keep doing everything that you guys do. Uh, your, um, your effort never goes unnoticed. We're very, very grateful. Hope you're doing all right and may you stay blessed. Please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to just, um, Give me the name or the link down below in the comment section below and I'll be sure to check it out. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe as usual. But before that feel free to go to our Facebook or Instagram. We go by Funny and Jesse. Become friends with us. Say hi. We'll say hi back. Our second channel Funny and Jesse 2.0. We post vlogs. Go there, subscribe and enjoy the content that we put out. So today I'm going to be reacting to Imam... Hanifa opened the grave of the Quran, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimahullah says, I came into a haram, and he says, I saw people from the east and the west, from all corners of the world, sitting and learning from Imam Abu Hanifa. As a poet, he says, Li Abi Hanifa, manarun fil aloom, muliat bihi al afaq wal aqtaru. He said, Imam Abu Hanifa is like a lighthouse. He's like a lighthouse. He filled all corners of the world with his knowledge. He was the Imam of the rich and the poor, the kings and the scholars, millions of scholars, many of them who are Hufadul Hadith, meaning that they knew a hundred thousand Hadith of the top of their head, followed the fiqh of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. And nowadays, you know, you get youngsters, and it is one of the signs of the day of judgment. When the Prophet Sallallahu said, one of the signs of the day of judgment is when the latter part of this ummah will curse the former. I mean, I had a friend who went to school with me and then he changed one path. And one day he came up to me and he goes, you know, is it true that Abu Hanifa only knew 17 Sahih Hadith? I said, SubhanAllah, on the basis of his 17 Sahih Hadith, they ruled with his fiqh half of the Muslim world. I said, if he knew a hundred sahih hadith, you guys would have never got a look in. But this is arrogance. He was a high Imam Dhahabi records him as being a Hafiz al Hadith. Hafiz al Hadith means a man who knows a hundred thousand hadith with the chain of transmission. He memorized the Quran at a very young age. And then it seems that his father was a silk trader. He became engrossed in business. And one day the famous hadith scholar Shabi thought that it was his student walking past and he called him. Then he realized his mistake. But he ascertained from talking to Imam Abu Hanifa, this young man, that he was very intelligent. So Shabi asked him, he said, do you go to the gathering of the ulama? He said, no, very rarely. He said, don't be heedless, seek knowledge, because I see ability in you. And then it was then that Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah stopped going to the marketplace. And the first knowledge that he ascertained was Asul al-Deen, which is science for the protection of the deen. Many say he overindulged in Ilm al-Kalam. It wasn't an overindulgement in Ilm al-Kalam. It was Asul al-Deen because Imam Abu Hanifa lived in Kufa. Kufa was one of the places where all the divan sects existed. The Qadriya, the Jabriya, the Mu'tazalites, the Shias. Imam Abu Hanifa's own neighbor was a Shia. And this Shia named one of his donkeys Umar, na'udhu billah, and the other one Abu Bakr. And one day one of the donkeys kicked him. And it killed him. And they came and informed Imam Abu Hanifa that his donkey kicked him and killed him. And Imam Abu Hanifa said, go and see. I guarantee you that the donkey that kicked him and killed him was the one that he named Umar. And they went and exactly that was what had happened. And he became a master in the science. He himself says, wherever I would walk, people would say, this is Abu Hanifa. No man can debate with Abu Hanifa. The Qadriya, the Jabariya, no Batil Firqa wanted to debate with Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. Even when the atheists came to Kufa, the governor looked for no other than Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. And they held this debate and there were thousands, if not hundreds and thousands of people there. 
And they're waiting and Imam Abu Hanifa hasn't turned up. And they're saying that Imam Abu Hanifa's bottled it. You know, he's scared. He hasn't turned up. And after a very long time, Imam Abu Hanifa turned up. And the atheist said, where you been? He said, what kind of Muslim are you? You give a time and you don't come on time? Imam Abu Hanifa should have said, you know, I'm a Pakistani Muslim. We're always late. And he said, I'm, I apologize, I'm late. But I live on the other side of the river. And I have to catch a boat to come onto this side of the river. But there was no boat. So what I saw is all of a sudden that a tree falls down itself. It cuts itself into planks. It comes together itself. And then it comes to me itself. I jump in it and I cross the river. And the atheist said, what a load of hocus pocus. He said, have you ever seen a tree fall down by itself, come together itself and go across itself? And Imam Abu Hanifa said, game over, debate finished. He said, what do you mean debate finished? The debate hasn't even started. And Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah said, if a little boat cannot come together itself, then how did the heavens and the earth? The sea and the trees, the birds and the bees come together without a creator. And this was the intellect, intellect of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah. The truth is today we don't have the Imam Abu Hanifas. That is the truth. We don't have anybody who can rise to the challenge. And by the age of 20, Imam Abu Hanifa in the science of Asuluddin had the largest halqa in Kufa by the age of 20. And one day a woman came and she asked him a masla regarding talaq and he didn't know it. And near his halqa was the gathering of Hamad ibn Abi Suleiman, a famous jurist, faqih. And he said, go and ask Hamad and come and tell me what Hamad says. So she went and asked Hamad and then she told him the answer. And the narration mentioned that Imam Abu Hanifa took his shoes. And he went and he sat, put his shoes by the gathering of Hamad. And for until Hamad did not die, Imam Abu Hanifa did not leave the side of Hamad. Rahmatullah alayhi. And this was destined. Because Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullah, was destined to codify the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Imam Abu Hanifa one day he saw a dream that he's digging up the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and then he finds in the grave that the bones of the Prophet ﷺ are scattered and he puts the bones into order and when he woke up he was very perturbed he was very perturbed and he sent somebody to ask Ibn Sarin the famous interpreter of dreams about this dream and Ibn Sarin said, the person who saw this dream, he will codify the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And until Hamad did not pass away, Imam Abu Hanifa did not leave his side. It wasn't like today, you know, somebody studies six years or eight years in the Darul Uloom, or six or eight years in some Jamia, and he gives out fatwas. No, Imam Abu Hanifa had 4,000 teachers. Nine, seven of them were Sahaba, 93 Tabi'een and the rest were Taba Tabi'een. He sought knowledge, knowledge how it should be sought. And this is why when some people now, they say things like, you know, yeah, he was a great Imam, but he didn't know how to pray Salah properly. What do you mean? Have some humility. He was the Imam of his time. If he didn't know how to pray Salah, his, his students was Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Fudayl ibn Iyaz, Imam Malik, Imam Yusuf, Imam Muhammad, Imam Zufar. He stayed six years in Mecca. If he didn't know how to pray Salah, they would have told him. He didn't need Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari came after him. Imam of his time and he didn't know how to pray Salah. Have some humility. But these are the things that people come out with today. And until Hamad did not pass away, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah didn't leave his side. And when Hamad passed away, Imam Abu Hanifa was 40 years old. 
And then he started his own halaqa. And in, in Kufa, his halaqa became the largest halaqa. Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahimullah says, I came to Kufa and I asked the people of Kufa, whose fiqh is the greatest fiqh? Who is the greatest faqih of Kufa? They said, Abu Hanifa. I asked them, who is the most muttaqi and who fears Allah? They said, Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. And this is why Imam Abu Hanifa never took it lightly to give fatwas. Wallahi, Jafar bin Rabi said, they had five years in, with Imam Abu Hanifa. And when he would give a fatwa, he would sweat like a river because he feared Allah. He inaugurated a shura of 40 people. And this was the first shura ever inaugurated. 40 mujtahids. And sometimes they would deliberate over one masla for over a month. And they say, that sometimes Mabu Haniba would stand up and he would say, maybe we can't read a con reach a conclusion because of my sins. And he would stand up and he would pray two rakats. And he would cry in front of Allah and he would do tawbah. And when Fadail ibn Ayyad heard about this, who was Fadail ibn Ayyad? Fadail ibn Ayyad was known as Abid al Haramain, the worshipper of the two harams. Because they say that there was not a place in the two masjids where the tears of Fudayl did not fall out of the fear of Allah. And when Fudayl ibn Ayyaz heard this, he was the student of Imam Abu Hanifa. He began to cry and he said, the likes of Imam Abu Hanifa don't have many sins to do tawbah from. They don't have many sins to do tawbah from. When Waqib ibn al-Jarrah, somebody came up to him and they said, Abu Hanifa makes many mistakes. And Waqib ibn al-Jarrah was the teacher, Imam Shafi and Imam Bukhari. He said, how could Abu Hanifa make many mistakes? And everybody makes mistakes. He said, but how could he make mistakes when he has students like Muhammad, Zuffar, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Daud al-Taif, Wallayl ibn Iyaz, Kind al-Hiban. He said, if he made a mistake, they would put him right. And this is why I say what Farazduk said to Jareed. He said, how alai abai fajitni bi mithlihim. He said, these are my forefathers. You bring those who compare with them. Uh, there's so many things in this video spoken about Hanifa, um, but let's focus on the dream of opening the grave. It's good as a person to always seek knowledge from others. You know, sometimes I, I believe that sometimes dreams do mean something. And if you go out and go to people that can help you interpret that dream or guide you onto the right path, then that's very, very amazing. You know, you shouldn't be arrogant enough to think that you know everything in this world. Learning never stops and you should constantly seek to learn something in a day. Even if it's one thing, learn that one thing, see where it takes you, you know. It's always, always advisable to learn something all the time. Uh, but do you guys actually believe in dreams? Do you believe that dreams actually um, have meanings to them? I mean, I don't think every dream, but I think some dreams actually stand for something. What, what are your thoughts on that, guys? What What would you say to what I've asked? Please suggest something for me down below to react to. I'll be more than glad to react to it. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.